a lot of people say easy for her to say, easy for him to say, but no, the, the path is there. And you just need to start taking one step at a time. You know, when I first met Robert Kiyosaki, he lived in a small two-bedroom condo. He had two small apartment complexes. He was making $100,000 a year in passive income, but his living expenses were $35,000. So he was financially free. It does mm -hmm. not have to be millions of dollars. And that's the message people need to understand. But the issue is if you're still relying on a paycheck, not only are you not in control of your time because your boss is, but you're exchanging time for money. And I tend to be a really lousy employee. I like to be in charge <laughs> of my own life and my own time. And I like to have assets that are working hard for me. So if I want to take the day off, it doesn't impact my income. With no limitations, what does your perfect day look like? What if it's possible to live like that every day? Would you wake up after 9 a.m., have perfect health, maybe fire your boss, have the money and freedom to do what you love most? The world is your oyster. Where would you be? Who would you be with? The possibilities are endless. Whether you believe it's possible for you or not, you can make more, work less and live free. Welcome to Freedom Hack Radio, where entrepreneur, best-selling author, world traveler and adventurer, Bryce Robertson and special guests crack the code on money, health, relationships, spirituality and having fun doing what you love most. Be inspired to create your own self-designed freedom lifestyle. Welcome back to another episode of Freedom Hack Radio. I'm your host, Bryce Robertson. And today, my friends, I'm very excited to share with you our very special guest, Miss Sharon Lecter. Sharon Lecter is an internationally recognized as a financial literacy expert, keynote speaker, and business mentor. She is a New York Times bestselling author, successful entrepreneur, philanthropist, and has enjoyed a 35-year career as a licensed CPA. She has advised two U.S. presidents on the topic of financial literacy. Sharon co-authored the international bestseller, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and 14 other books in the Rich Dad series. In 2008, when the economy crashed, she was asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to help re-energize the teachings of Napoleon Hill. Her best-selling books with the foundation include Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, and Think and Grow Rich for Women, and Success and Something Greater. She is also featured in the movie Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and on the national television series World's Greatest Motivators. Sharon is currently launching her newest title, Exit Rich to support entrepreneurs in building value and scalability in their businesses so they can be in the position of greatest potential. Sharon, it's a pleasure to have you here on Freedom Hack Radio. Thank you, Bryce. I'm delighted to be with you. Thank you so much. Excellent. Well, Sharon, mate, I'd really, really love to start with what's giving you the most gratitude today, mate. Well, I think each and every day I, I receive a letter or a text or an email from someone who's um, taken a step forward and made their life better today than it was yesterday because of something they've read or something I've shared. And that's, you know, I was raised by a father that asked me each night, Sharon, have you added value to someone's life today? And he's been gone for 15 years, but I still ask myself that extra step in somebody's um, step and they can smile and their face is a little happier today than yesterday. Then I think we've been served well. Wow, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Well, mate, I'm excited to have you here with us today so that we can learn more about exiting rich. Uh, I'm a mobile home park owner operator. So my whole business revolves around buying at a low valuation and then doing everything I can to drive up the net operating income and have a higher valuation and exit rich. So really, really excited to dig into this. And Sharon, you know, one of the things I love about you is that you're a big thinker, you're a big action taker, and you create manifest, uh, you know, amazing things, big ideas. You've built multi-million, multi-billion, sorry, with a B dollar brands, and you're creator of the play big movement, which we're going to take a deep dive on a little bit later. But before we do, Sharon, what's your big reason why? What's your driving force behind playing big? And what pushes you through all the challenges of building a multi-billion dollar brand? 
Well, thank you, Bryce. I think one of the biggest issues is I think people play small. And if you're going to put a lot of energy into something, you might as well make it a large impact. So the Play Big movement is about being number one in your field, live your legacy, because people think about the legacy after they're gone. No, you create your legacy every single day with every heart you touch and then creating maximum impact. So if you're gonna do something, do it on, on the biggest scale possible. And too many times we limit ourselves because of our own personal limiting beliefs. When I met the inventor of the Talking Children's book, um, it was back in 1987, kids didn't have electronics. And so we said, how can we really um, get parents to trust us? And it was by aligning with companies like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics, that we were able to really explode that company in a, in a very positive way because parents trusted those brands. Therefore, our products were able to be accepted right away. And that's, you know, the power of association is something that I talk about and I all of my success, I can account to that. And I think it's really understanding how you can align that power of association, who can support you in taking what you're doing to a much bigger level. Wow. Wow. And you've certainly been a leading example of that. So Sharon, if we could dial back the clock a little bit here, and if you could please share with us, how did you and your husband, Michael, um, you know, come across the Kiyosakis and then end up co-founding the Rich Dad brand together? Well, we can dial back to the point where I've been an entrepreneur since I was 25. And we launched the talking book company with the inventor there. And we sold that in 1991 and moved to Arizona in 92. Our oldest son went off to college in 92 and came left in September, came home in December in credit card debt. I was pretty mad at him, but I was more mad at myself because I had taught him about money. But he got to campus and there were free pizza, free money, tables greeting him, free t-shirt, free money. So um, he had a really good time his first semester in college. And then the, the bill started rolling in. And so that was in December after he had left and he came home and we didn't bail him out. He had to work really hard to get out of, out of debt, but that was December of 1992. And that's really when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy, financial education. I started working with the school systems, hence the white hair, if you ever tried to get school systems to change. And you fast forward a few years, 1996, my husband called me one day and he said, I had this guy come in my office today in flip-flops and Bermuda shorts and <laughs> you know, Hawaiian shirt with this idea for a board game. It was drawn out on a piece of butcher block paper. And so I met Robert Kiyosaki at the first beta test for the, his board game, Cash Flow. And he had gone to see my husband because my husband is a well-known intellectual property attorney. Mm. And he wanted to get some input on how he could protect the ideas behind the game. So Michael helped him secure a patent on the game, but I met him at the first beta test and it was exactly what I was teaching, the importance of buying, building, creating assets. And when he did the, I was the only one that got out of the rat race during the beta test. So I thought it was great. He was depressed that I was the only one that got out, but <laughs> um, I volunteered to help him commercialize that game because of my experience with the talking book. We also did games. And it was during that process that he told me he was going to charge $200 for this board game. And I said, that's kind of pricey. You know, maybe you should write a brochure that explains the philosophy behind it that would encourage people to invest $200 in a board game. And that's when he asked me to be his partner. And we wrote the brochure together. And that brochure was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And most people don't and that Rich Dad Poor Dad was never intended to be a product of its own. It was literally written as a marketing tool. Wow. And the world said, no, 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 your brand is not cash flow. Your brand is Rich Dad. And Rich Dad became a you know international phenomena. And we ended up, we never expected to write more than one book, but this little book ended up turning into three books yeah. and then three books into 15 during the 10 years we worked together. And it went around the world, over 100 countries and over 50 languages, and um, kind of took the world by storm. We built the largest personal finance brand because it was the right message at the right time. But that's how we met, and that's how we built it, because I had my background in accounting, and I had um, experience in writing as well as publishing. So we were able to work together. 
That's beautiful. And you guys really changed the world. I mean, you know, being in the real estate game myself, 99.9% of people who joined the real estate game say that they did it through reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So that's, that's really awesome. Thank you very much for, for creating that for everybody. Um, and then, you know, fast forwarding in 2008, when the economy took a dump, you were approached by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to help re-energize the powerful works of Napoleon Hill, which led you to releasing three best-selling books, Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, and Think and Grow Rich for, Reven uh, for Women. Can you unpack this journey for us? Well, certainly. In fact, in 2007, Robert and I have been partners for 10 years. And um, at that point, we kind of had different philosophies about how we wanted to head. So we decided, you know, I decided to leave the organization, not knowing what was ahead of me. And I tell people, sometimes you have to close the door for other doors of opportunity to open. And a few months later is when I got the call from President Bush, and I served both President Bush and Obama on the President's Advisory Council for Financial Literacy. I would not have had that call had I still been at Rich Dad. And the other call I got was in March of 2008 from Don Green, the CEO of the foundation, asking me to step in and reinvigorate Napoleon Hill's teachings because of what was happening in the economy. Many young people at that point didn't know who Napoleon Hill was, had never heard of Think and Grow Rich. Mm. Now, I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19. Probably didn't understand the impact it had on my thinking and my um, way of life until probably in my 30s. But it was such an important thing. And so when you talk to young people, they, they understand the, the concept of mastermind. Well, Napoleon Hill created that. They understand the concept of a law of attraction. Of course, I think it was from the movie and the book, The Secret. The but secret. Napoleon Hill actually wrote about law of attraction in 1919. Yeah. He wrote, pay yourself first. He also wrote for the pre President Roosevelt, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. So people knew his work. They just might not know his name in the book, Thinking We're Rich. So it was a huge honor to be able to do that, to really reinvigorate and bring his teachings to the modern reader. And it was just, it's just been an incredible relationship. Yeah, that's amazing, you know, and and you've worked with, you know, brands like Disney, and Time Warner, you've worked with two US presidents as an advisor on the topic of financial literacy. And, uh, you know, oh, my God, if, if this topic of financial literacy was taught in schools, like, I, you know, the imagine the possibilities of the future of our culture is just it's mind boggling. So, so what's missing? Like, what's not being taught in schools about financial literacy? And, and how is financial literacy? literacy converted into real tangible results for your clients. Well, thank you, Bryce. I think that's such a, that's my soapbox. So I'll try to be brief, but um, we still are not teaching kids about money. There are only seven states in the U S that require personal finance class for graduation. 12 others require some personal finance for graduation, but not a separate class. And that's just, it's just criminal that we're not uh, making sure because if we really want to level the playing field for every child so that every child has equal opportunity, we will make sure we teach personal finance in high school. And so that every kid has the opportunity to understand that money, you're either in control of your money or your money's in control of you. There's nothing in between. And so it's so important, but it's not just America. It's no matter where I go, no matter what your address is or what language you speak, we're not preparing our, the next generation for the economic world they're going to face. And we must really continue doing that. It's been my soapbox since December of 92. When I was working with the presidents, we did pass the Credit Card Act that now prohibits those credit card companies from praying and soliciting students on college campuses. Now, I can't take credit for the bill directly, but I was certainly a squeaky wheel. And so that now the, kid, the college kids, they still get solicited, but they have to prove that they can repay and they have to or have a cosigner. And so that moment in time to process it, but we still um, have to get financial education in the schools. And so as a concerned parent, aunt, uncle, adult, um, in the interim, while we continue battling the school systems, it's up to us to make sure the young people we care about are given the tools and the education they need to succeed. 
Yeah, you know, it's so important. You know, it starts with people at schools and then, you know, people reach adulthood and I like I, not many people at all understand how the banking systems work. They know nothing about fractional reserve lending. They hear about all of this currency creation uh, that's happening and they don't know what the actual impacts of it are. Um, there's just so much of a lack of understanding how the money game works. And it's really, uh, and, and I'd love for you to sh shed a little bit of light on this. It's really, you know, not that much of a uh, complex system to be able to navigate through and succeed in once you understand the rules of the game yet yet nobody really knows about it well you know it's, it's even at an even much lower basic level um, we're taught in school to be employees we're taught to exchange mm -hmm. time for money and the problem there is there's only so many hours in the day only so many days in the week and we have to change the way our, our thinking is instead of exchanging time for money, let's invest our time to buy, build and create assets, income producing assets, because you're financially free when the income from your assets exceed your monthly expenses. And so for instance, you, you're talking about you real, you, the real estate that you invest in, you can have rental real estate and it gets to the point where you're getting enough passive income that you're, you don't have to get out of bed. And so those assets and those businesses are working for you. And that's what I teach people. I teach people how to stop working and exchanging time for money and start investing their time to buying, building, and creating those assets. It can be businesses. It can be real estate. It can be paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It can be currencies. It can also be intellectual property, which is what you know. Let's take what you know and make it in a tangible format that people can access 24-7 and pay you for it. Yeah. And it's, and it really is a rabbit hole of possibilities too. I mean, I was, I was, I trapped myself in a 20 year career in construction and construction management. Cause I thought that is how I'm going to make money. And I was totally changing, exchanging my time for money. And then I got into the real estate world into mobile home park investing and created financial freedom in two and a half years. And when I did that, I just looked back and I was like, I've had a really pleasurable experience over the last two and a half years becoming financially free. And I really didn't enjoy the career that I had before. I became really compelled to want to share that with people. And then, you know, Freedom Hack Radio was born and my education platform was born. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, the, the deeper I go in it, the more time I spend in this world, the more that there's just so many opportunities that I literally can't even keep up with them. And if only people knew uh, that it's, it's so within everybody's reach, if, if anybody's listening to this right now, they totally have the capacity to be able to work towards financial freedom. And, you know, being in America, that's one of the best countries in the world, from my experience, to have a barrier of entry to do so. Well, your story is perfect and it needs to be broadcast because your 20 year career and then two and a half years, you're able to become financially free by investing in mobile home. And that, that's, it's so important for people to understand that they can do it too. And a lot of people say easy for her to say, easy for him to say, but no, the, the path is there and you just need to start taking one step at a time. You know, when I first met Robert Kiyosaki, he lived in a small two bedroom condo. He had two small apartment complexes. He was making $100,000 a year in passive income, but his living expenses were $35,000. So he was financially free. It does mm -hmm. not have to be millions of dollars. And that's the message people need to understand. But the issue is if you're still relying on a paycheck, not only are you not in control of your time because your boss is, but you're exchanging time for money. And I tend to be a really lousy employee. I like to be in charge <laughs> of my own life and my own time. And I like to have assets that are working hard for me. So if I want to take the day off, it doesn't impact my income. Yeah, and that's what it's all about too, isn't it? I mean, it's not It's not like it's It's really the end goal is to have more money. It's what we're going to do with our money, how are we going to positively impact the world, how are we going to spend our time now that we don't have to worry about money. And that's like the real thing. We all want freedom really at the end of the day. More money just reveals more of your character. If you are generous, you're going to be more generous. If you're a greedy person and you make more money, you're going to be probably more greedy. Um, the issue is not, um, you know, we, the, the, if you can make more money, you can do more good. You can give more away. You can help other people. You can create opportunities for employment. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. 
It's not what you do for your paycheck that determines your financial destiny. It's what you do with your paycheck. Mm -hmm. So you love your job, fantastic. But are you investing your paycheck? Are you investing it in other assets that give you that ability to have freedom outside the job? Yeah, and that's certainly not what's being promoted on television and the radio and in media. I mean, we're, we're taught to go out there and spend our money and want to get a Lamborghini and things like this. But like you said, you know, scaling back and just figuring out how we could live a simple life and create financial freedom first, and then we can build from there. What you just said is so important because it is, you know, this industry that I'm in, um, the people you know, showing off their Lamborghinis and their private jets, it, you know, it gives this 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 false goal and part of it is to get people to make a move right so it's not all bad but the issue is let's get the let's get to the point where you can choose what you do let's not get, let's not just keep going after shiny object syndromes let's go after those investments that will pay off i'd rather buy an apartment complex than a lamborghini right i'd rather buy an apartment complex than a jet because those things are income producing assets yeah. Yeah. And, and as the key and as the Kiyosaki's talk, and as you guys wrote in rich dad, poor dad, if, if you, if we want something in life, if we want to get a new Porsche in life, how can we create an income producing asset that's going to produce the cash flow so that we can go out and pay for the payments for that car? Not let's how, let's, you know, figure out how to make the money to go out and buy it. Yes. Let the assets that you own pay for the toys. Yep. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, you know, if, if you don't mind me asking right now in today's market, um, you know, where are you seeing the opportunity? Where are you seeing uh, places for people to invest in and create these kinds of financial freedom? Well, there are lots of new, new areas to invest. And one of the, you know, in real estate's always a sound investment. The issue is finding those areas of real estate that are, that are, um, going to be re relatively recession proof. People always need somewhere to live. Um, self storage is still absolutely going high. M mobile home parks are absolutely fantastic. Res uh, multifamily residential units. Um, we invest in several syndications that are building entire new communities because the population mm -hmm. is growing. And so, as, as you know, the the issue is understanding, doing your education and making sure you're relying on the people that you do your, your due diligence and the people that you're investing with to make sure that they have the track record, that they are, have had success where you want to go. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, I think that, you know, 80% of a decision making or more should be on the actual operator and how are they going to manage the investment. And of course, the investment itself should pass the test. But you know, a good operator can take a, a poor performing asset and make it shoot through the roof. Um, but a bad operator could take a good asset and just averagely make it perform. So, so that's great advice. Um, you know, with everything that's going on in the economy right now, where we are in the world, um, how do you feel about, you know, the next couple of years um, with investments and the economy and everything along those lines? Well, there are always opportunities. Um, there are certainly some things in the, in the economic forecast that are concerning, obviously, the level of debt that we have as a nation, um, in, a significant increase in taxes. Um, if certain things that want to get changed, like getting rid of you know, the increasing capital gains, all of those things are going to impact the um, benefit of certain investing classes, but it doesn't mean that they aren't going to still be beneficial. So the issue is making sure you do your homework, paying attention to those changes and having the right advisors on your team. You know, one of the biggest issues I stress is having mentors. Too many people think they have to do everything on their own. And you want somebody that is an expert that understands as an authority in the field and can give you the right kind of wisdom. You know, so in Three Feet from Gold, I talk about um, are you looking for advice or counsel, right? Mm -hmm. Advice is somebody's opinion. They may not know more about it than you do, but a, somebody that gives you counsel, somebody who's been there, done that, and they have the expertise and the wisdom to help you make the better decisions. And it's so important as you go through life is to make sure that you're, you're listening to the right people. 
you you know, I have a, in, our, in the book, Three Feet from Gold, which was the first book that I did with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, I have something called the personal success equation. And it's combining your passion and your talent. Now, my passion came from anger. We weren't teaching kids about money in school, plus talent. I had a lot of years as an accountant, lots of publishing, and I could combine those two. But most of us stop there thinking we have to do it on our own. But true success comes from the times A, and that times A is association. So I welcome my new association with you, Bryce. I'm always looking at expanding my associations. Do you have the right people on your team? Do you have people on your team who are strong where you are weak? Do you have the right mentor? Do you have the right advisors? So that power of association is so important. And then there's a times A, taking action. How many times do we know what we're supposed to do? We simply don't do it. Anybody feel busted? I think so. So passion plus talent times association times action plus F, which is faith, having faith in yourself, having faith in what you're doing, having faith that it's needed and necessary, and having faith that it will succeed. And that faith and power of association go hand in hand. Because when you have the right people around you and you have a bad day, they lift you up. But too many of us, that F is actually fear holding us back, keeping us from taking action. And you can go to personalsuccessequation.com. I have a free handout for you to go through and assess your own situation. Where do you need the most work? When I start with a new mentoring client, it's usually the power of association and that confidence, that faith that we have to work on the most. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing that gift. And for, for all of our freedom hackers right now, you're going to see a link uh, to the personal success equation in the show notes below. So make sure to take uh, action and, 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 and take action on that link below. And so you can actually figure out your personal success equation for you. And, you know, you are a leading example, Sharon, you know, there's so many people out there that are financial advisors that you know, they're earning less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. They're, they're trying to advise people who are multi-millionaires and this is something that like so many people don't actually think about you said it before like where people are getting their advice from you know i'm not going to get a, a fitness advice of a fat fitness instructor and the same thing goes for um, my financial advice as well but there's not really that many people out there that are giving financial advice or financial education that really really are crushing it so thank you very much for being that leading example well, thank you, Bryce. I appreciate that. And that's my passion in life. As I said, it's, it's as um, burning bright today as it was in December of 92, when I first dedicated my career to financial literacy, financial education, and entrepreneurship. So Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Sharon, if it's okay with you, I'd, I'd like to go to a bit of a dark place right now in aims of retrieving light at the end of the tunnel and uh, empowerment through standing at the face of adversity. And in 2012, uh, your son, William, unexpectedly passed away. And so could you sh please share with us, what was this experience like for you? How did this affect you? And, um, what inspired you to recently uh, rekindle the flame of playing big? Well, thank you, Bryce. Um, we are not supposed to outlive our, outlive our children. And December of 2012, we lost our youngest son. And um, to say it was devastating is an understatement. Um, I went into what I would call a world of numb, living life in neutral. Um, my grief was very long lived and I actually stopped playing big. I was really kind of looking down all the time. I like wearing blinders. And about five years ago, I actually thought about retiring because it was, I wasn't getting the joy out of what I was doing. And I got a lot of pushback from family and friends. And I actually think I heard my son in my ear going, get over it, mom, there's more for you to do. And I realized that all of us, have had things that stopped us in our tracks. Every one of you. Um, it might not have been a loss of a child, but it could have been a death of someone else, a divorce, a financial setback, an illness, and it stops us in our tracks. And the question is, what do you do about it? Yes, there, a grief time is very important, but it's also, you're still here. And as my son, you know, I'm still here for a reason. You're still here for a reason. And what you've been through has prepared you to help others that are going through it as well. And so I made the decision to re-energize and to play big again for me. And I said, but I don't wanna do it alone. 
and I launched a private Facebook group called the Play Big Movement, and it's totally free to join. It's to, I don't advertise it. It's totally organic. But I want to support people to play that bigger game, to be the number one in your field, to live their legacy and create maximum impact. And Bryce, it was just magical. When I made that decision to play big again, it's like I took the blinders off and all these opportunities that have always been there. I started recognizing them. I was invited to be in the movie Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy. I was invited to be on the world's greatest motivators television show. I got invited on several, you know, many, many wonderful big stages. And, but we have to open our eyes and make ourselves available. Sometimes we have to close that door for other doors of opportunity to open. But we also have to allow ourselves to put ourselves into the posi uh, position of greatest and highest potential. And that's to play a bigger game. You know, too many people are playing small. I want you to play a bigger game. So do, do you feel that by starting up the play big movement that at the time where you wanted to inspire people to play big, that that had a return on investment with you and made you even more compassionate or more uh, motivated to play big yourself, like holding you accountable? Yes, Bryce. I mean, we've heard the, the phrase, you see if a glass half full or half empty. And this whole experience has proven to me that our glass is refillable, right? Um, I lost a huge part of my heart when I lost my son. But when I started doing the Play Big movement, I started having doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring. It helped, it helped fill that a little bit because most of my clients call me Mama Lecter because I pour into them. I step into their world. I see things greater for them than they see for themselves. And so that's really helped heal me, but it's also given me such um, grace and such um, love for everybody striving to do better that if there's something that I can do or support or a door that I can open, it gives me great joy. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I know that our listeners uh, would, could have the opportunity of exploring having you as a mentor. Um, I know your time is very limited and you do have a qualification process, but uh, we will have a link in the show notes for people to be able to explore that possibility should they wish. Uh, one of the things you talk about in your new book, Exit Rich, is identifying what type of business we own. And if we get this wrong, then we'll never find the right buyer. Can you digress on this? a little bit for us? Well, certainly, you know, this is my 26th book. And I really felt that it was needed and necessary because when you start a business, do you start the business expecting that you have to work hard every single day for the rest of your life? Or do you start a business with the expectation that you're going to create something that's successful where you will get your time back? Okay. Almost every time somebody says number two, but the reality is they don't ever get past creating number one. They, they, they are still too much in the business, not they don't work on the business. And so I want to help people understand how to take their successful business and make it sustainable, scalable, and saleable. Exit Rich doesn't just mean having to sell your business. It's also get the business to where someone else is running it and you can walk away. You're, you're exiting rich because you've got your time back and you've got the cash flow or you have the ability to sell it to the employees or for your generation, for your family. But you can't do that if you don't put the structure in the business. And so too many people skip over that. And so we talk about the 6P method of building that successful, sustainable business. It's really understanding the people, right? Who do you have on your team? Do you have people on your team who are strong where you are weak? Many entrepreneurs were great at creation and getting going and marketing, but we're not really good at day-to-day. -day. So you need to have the right people on your team. And then product, what are your products? And many times your one product could be four or five. And then processes, when you build a house, you have to go down first, have a strong foundation. You have to put in the electrical system, the plumbing system. And most businesses, we, we need the same types of systems. And a lot of people skip over them. They build the business around people, not systems. Very important to build it around systems. And then proprietary. What makes you unique? What gives you your competitive advantage? Let's identify that. It's intellectual property, those intangible assets. Let's identify those. Let's protect them and leverage them. People, every business has intellectual property. The issue is have they identified it? Have they protected it? And have they leveraged it? Most times not. 
and then your patrons. And in today's world, Bryce, everybody's all excited about having a million followers on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, but you don't own those. And so, yes, you want to be out there. You want to be on all those platforms, but you want to invite them home, nurture them Mm -hmm. home to your database because your database is is your intellectual property. And many companies are sold simply for their databases. And so many companies out there today are ignoring the database because they're so they're so saturated in social media. And it's like it's a danger zone. They have to get those names into their database and then profits. Well, yeah, most people focus on the product and the profits and they don't take account and really secure the other four Ps. And that's what we wanted to highlight in the book Exit Rich to give you the process and the steps that you can take to solidify the value and prepare yourself and put in that structure so that you get your time back and you have the opportunity to sell and get a valuation much higher than you would if before you read the book. Wow, that is so powerful, so powerful. And and in Exit Rich, you anchor each chapter with a mentoring corner section, providing readers with a perspective they need to take control of their business's future and exit rich. What inspired you to have this unique approach and what can readers take away from this? Well, thank you, Bryce. I appreciate that question because um, Michelle Soller Tucker is my co-author and she run, she has a, 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 a broker company selling buying and selling businesses and she's a mergers and acquisitions specialist. So she's very tactical. This, you know, do A, B, C, D. But my participation was to look at that and add where I felt that there needed to be stuff added to it from my experience. But I also wanted to um, add the value of the strategy, the overall strategy from a mentor and an investor's perspective. You know, what? Do, why are we looking at this? Why is this important? And so we, we did it that way. So a lot of the content is mine as well as Michelle's, but I really wanted to add this mentoring section to give the why and to give the perspective because inside the business, this is what you need to do. But I wanted to give the perspective from outside the business, why you want to do that. That's awesome. That's valuable. Adding extra context in there. And, um, you know, one of the things about Exit Rich is that you you have a uh, a blueprint for maximizing your business profits as readers learn how to evaluate their business, when to sell it, how to work with top business authorities that make it happen. I mean, you're really providing some massive value here. This truly is an actionable book. Um, What's the ultimate goal that you are wanting to achieve for readers of your latest book exit rich oh well it's a 24 to 27 dollar investment depending on whether you get it from amazon barnes and noble or your local bookstore or you can go to my website and i'll autograph it for you but i want to support you in that one tiny little investment having a thousand times return to you to give you that one or two things that you can do today to add that value and, and that depth and breadth to your company. And so it's a huge compliment to all the other books that I've written. And it's something that we want people to understand, you know, the power of having the right advisor on your team. Too many times people decide they want to sell their company, but they don't pre-qualify the buyers. And they spend a lot of time and energy talking to potential buyers. And then they take their eye off the business, the day-to-day part of the business. And so it's really important to understand the strategy and the best way to position yourself, the best way to prepare yourself, the best way to public, you know, have the right purchasers come to you and make sure you've got the right people on your team that can handle it and represent you. That's huge. This really is all in one. I mean, for like $27, it's a no brainer. And, uh, you know, a lot of books, it kind of lead to something, but there's another step you have to take. It's really, you really are sharing a lot of value with this book. That's it's amazing to get your hands on a copy of, uh, exit rich. You get to see the uh, links in the show notes below, and, uh, we'll give you links directly to that book. So make sure you take action, play big and get a copy today. And Sharon, from your perspective, what does the ultimate freedom lifestyle look like for you? Well, that's a great question, Bryce, because people often ask me my definition of success. 
And you would think it has something to do with dollars and cents because I talk about financial freedom coming from assets when the income from your assets exceeds your monthly expenses. But from a definition of success, I think it's how you feel about yourself when you look in the mirror. It has nothing to do with your reflection or the dollars and cents in your bank account. Is are you happy? Are you feeling fulfilled? Um, and I think it's really important for people to understand that um, you are a perfect creation of you. Don't try to be someone else. And it's so important for people to find that happiness within themselves. And I think it's also important for people to understand that, yes, so there are gonna, always going to be people that are wealthier, skinnier, and but you have control over whether anybody's happier. And so my challenge to you is find that that the freedom for you in your heart as well as in your wallet. That's beautiful. And and do you have any sort of daily practices or weekly practices that you do that help you feel fulfilled, that give you like wholeness in life? I have lots of daily practices. Um, certainly, uh, my husband and I will have been married 41 years in September. So we are very Congratulations. Fo focused on our relationship and keeping it strong. And he's the smartest yeah. man I have ever met. So our respect is stronger um, those days. And when love gets challenged, respect steps in. And then also mm. we have wonderful children wow. and grandchildren. So family is always very important. The name of my company is Pay Your Family First. We get up and we um, we exercise together every single morning. And we um, I set out my intentions for the day. And I have something that I used to call the 222 rule, which was, um, before the day ended, I would write two handwritten notes, make two phone calls and send two faxes. That tells you how long ago it was moving my business forward, always focusing mm -hmm. on the future. And today it's more like two, 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 because no faxes, but I still the notes, the phone calls and now Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is to get the, always focusing on the future of the business. Cause sometimes we get bogged down on our day to day. And so if you just have a system where every day you focus on doing something, reaching out to somebody you haven't talked to, finding a new contact, it helps keep that, that thirst and that drive in your business. And, and how long have you been doing that for the two, two, two? Well, probably 20 years. Wow, the compound effect of that must be astronomical. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, I know that you and Michael love spending quality time together at the Cherry Creek Lodge, um, your off the grid dude ranch. Can you share what it's like spending time there and why it's so important to recharge in between playing big? It is a little piece of heaven. And certainly um, when we lost our son going up there, you realize, you know, your troubles are like this completely compared the, the beauty of God's world, right? And um, we bought it because my husband wanted a survival property. He wanted somewhere where he could go shoot his guns and nobody would get mad at him. And so we were looking for 10 acres. We found this place 16 years ago. And it's actually a piece of American and Arizona history. Uh, we own 300 acres and 40,000 acres of leased property from the federal government. Wow. And so overnight we became cattle ranchers. And then we, you know, I said, Mike, we got to walk the talk, got to turn this into an asset. And so I show people the pictures of the, of the ranch, cherrycreeklodge.com is the website. And I said, you see, you see cows, they're my assets, my mama cows. And then we built a beautiful lodge that is available for you to come and rent one room or take a, the whole thing for family reunions or business retreats or masterminds. And so we want to share it, but it really is, it's totally off the grid. It's in the middle of the Tonto National Forest here in Arizona, three hours outside wow. Phoenix. And it's all solar powered, our own well water. We have a beautiful fish, a lake that you can go fishing in. And so you have the ability to sit and fish. You can horseback ride. You can go to the shooting range. You can sit on the beautiful deck and have a, enjoy a glass of nice wine at sunset. It's a little piece of heaven and it's really away from the city lights, away from any pollution. And you just feel the peace. And it's like the, you can reach out and touch the stars at night. Wow, that's beautiful. I totally get the importance of off grid. I, I totally appreciate that. We're fans of that. My wife and I actually lived that ourselves. Um, and and just just touching a little bit deeper on why it's so important to recharge between playing big, like how does that impact your business? And how does that impact you, your well being, your marriage? 
uh, and all of the things in life. Well, it allows your mind to be at peace when you're in a state of, of enjoyment of nature and recharging and allows your subconscious to work. And so sometimes we're so focused on the doing that we stop the being. And when you can just be still and enjoy nature, the, the your subconscious mind is still working and all kinds of new thoughts and new opportunities come to play. But we, our mind cannot hold positive and negative at the same time. And so if you're so focused on taking care of this, taking care of this, taking care of this, your subconscious doesn't have the time. Your imagination is not allowed to play. And it's very important that we keep our creativity and our imagination alive. And you do that by being at rest and just being instead of doing. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I'm actually looking forward to getting a bit of recharge myself of just being closing on a handful of deals. And the demand for me and my business has been, you know, it's been large lately and I've got a couple of weeks left and then there's light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm looking forward to scaling back and spending some more time in nature myself. Um, Sharon, if you could dial back the clock and give one piece of advice to the 20 year old version of yourself, what would that piece of advice be? Well, when I get asked that question, I'm going to tell you my normal answer, and then I'll give you what I don't do, because I will actually give you an answer. But I get asked that question a lot. And I go, one of the things that life has taught me, um, I'm 67 today, you know, this, this year, it is that I wouldn't be who I am today if it weren't for all the things that happened to me during my life, positive and negative. And so I don't like to dwell in the past. I am who I am today and I want the next step to be. But in saying that at the age of 25, when I made the decision to leave public accounting, it was because I can't, I asked myself, why not? You know, I had the pros and cons. I had an opportunity to leave public accounting with a client. And so I did the whole pros and cons. I could argue both sides. It didn't help me. And my hand just took across the top of the page and said, why not? Why not do something different? Why not take the road less traveled? Why not solve a problem or serve a need? Successful businesses solve problems and serve needs. And so that why not attitude at 25 is alive and well in me today. And I usually share that wherever I go and speak. Why not? Why not do something that you've never done before? And I always challenge people, and I'll leave your audience with this as well. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Just think about it. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Because that's what allows us to stay creative and stay young and challenge ourselves. Yeah. And, and, you know, listening to that, I'm hearing that it's an opportunity to push ourselves outside our comfort zone and expand our comfort zone. And um, I mean, you obviously don't have to do anything that you're doing. You're completely choosing to do all the things you need, you're doing right now. You don't need any of this to, to, um, you know, make your financial life any better. You're, you're clearly doing this for other people. Um, and I can tell your passion in all of this is great. You know, Th thanks for keeping it going for such a long time. Um, for all of our freedom hackers out there looking to take their financial freedom to the next level, uh, what's one golden nugget that you could leave with them that would help them get on that path? Well, we are all where we are today because of the choices we made before today. If you want something different, if you want something better, if you want something more successful, you just need to start making different choices today. There's so many opportunities. And um, I can't always leave with one, but it's not what you do for your paycheck. It's what you do with your paycheck. And mm -hmm. who are you listening to? All right. Mm -hmm. When we talk about our future, how are you spending your time and who are you spending it with? Spend your time with people that energize you, that get your imagination going, that encourage you to continue moving forward in whatever endeavor you want to be in. Wow, that is huge with all the noise that's happening in the world today and all the different angles that we can get information and advice from. That is sage advice right there. Sharon, how do Freedom Hackers keep the conversation going with you? I would love it, Bryce. Thank you so much. I'm Sharon Lecter just about everywhere. LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Facebook, and Twitter. I, I, you can reach out to me. SharonLector.com is my website. You can email me info at SharonLector.com. And I challenge you all to reach out. I'd love to hear from you.
Beautiful. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. Uh, Sharon, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your vulnerability, your authenticity, for sharing many life-changing nuggets with us, uh, wishing you the utmost prosperity and success and abundance in all areas of life. Uh, and I, I know I got a personal little nugget before when you were talking about your husband, you said, uh, when love gets challenging, respect steps in. I am totally taking that one to my wife. That's amazing. That's I've never heard that before. And I think that's a really, really cool perspective. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. And for all of our freedom hackers out there, um, I hope you've got an absolute ton of value out of this today. Um, you know, keep, make sure to keep the conversation going. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host, Bryce Robertson. And until next week, live large, and live free. G'day, this is Bryce Robertson. I'm your host here at Freedom Hack Radio, and I truly, truly hope that you got a ton of value out of the episode that we just shared with you. And if you did, make sure to subscribe on your YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to your favorite podcasting platform. Hit the notification button so you can find out about the next episodes as they come out. Because if you haven't achieved financial time and location freedom, you really need to be dialed in here. So make sure to subscribe and follow us along as you grow on your path to financial time and location freedom here at Freedom Hack Radio.